most AI applications today feel like a mouthful of truffle pasta that you can't taste and can't smell. Who wants that? No one. We have a big problem today building AI applications. Too much AI infrastructure and not enough applications in production. And we've seen a lot of talks talk about that. How do you cross that chasm? How do we get past that problem of not having enough, right? The first talk, Stanislas had a big call to build, and that's what I'm here to do today. But a lot of that has to do with fear, fear and a lack of understanding, because we aren't really sure what we need to get past this chasm. And like I mentioned, that's what today's talk is to do, to help you cross that chasm in building multimodal applications. We like to define multimodality as a system with the ability to process multiple types of modalities. Um, and I like to think of modalities outside of the traditional media types, like images or videos, and also include things like depth information or even um, code. I feel like that's a modality that needs to be taken care of. But the problem with modalities today is we look at them as these singular blobs where we look at a language model or a um, model in general, and when we pass input in, we're expecting it to do everything, and we look at it as this monolithic thing that is a magic box. But it isn't like that, right? Just like your truffle pasta, the Parmesan plays a big role, the pasta plays a big role, and of course, the truffle plays a big role, right? And I feel like that's how we need to think about applications, as a monolith collection of multiple components doing the best at what they do best and giving you the tools and enabling you to do what you want to do. So really the way I want to think about multimodality or present this idea of thinking about compound AI systems, which a lot of smart people thought about and noticed that singular foundational models can only take us so far, and we're better off looking at models as, or rather AI systems, as a collection of multiple components that work together to solve the problems you're looking to solve. Right. And <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of software problems um, for the developers here are essentially plumbing, right? We've seen a lot of talks about orchestration, um, constraints, and essentially a big theme for the next few months, believe it or not, will be consolidation and orchestration. Because at the end of the day, it's all plumbing, right? So in, in this attempt to help you cross this chasm, I want to talk about two things, the first being predicting, or rather, um, outputs that we know, right? And the second being advanced interactions. We want to be able to have both of these. Let's talk about the first one. We had a little study um, with the Wevia team um, and wanted to look at the baseline of building and interacting predictable outputs for models. And rudimentary, or the most rudimental method that we thought about was this f-string idea of prompting, right? Where we basically told the, these models that we want the output to look a certain specific way. Because like I mentioned, it's all plumbing. You need one pipe to look at the other pipe and have them fit so you have a smooth flow of data and information. And this is the first step, usually. Um, the next is something like follow the format. I think we might be familiar with tools like DSPy, where we have more fine-grained um, methodologies or ways of telling the language model or different types of models that this is the output that I want, right? But we can also get rid of these very rudimentary types of predictive outputs or getting predictive outputs. In a later slide, I'll show you something uh, called LMQL, uh, which essentially does that in a more sustainable, well, more scalable way, less sustainable. Um, and recently, of course, you've seen JSON mode with tools like OpenAI, um, and more of late structured outputs where we can have specific types of outputs defined um, because we need that consistency if we're going to build these larger computational models that get one thing, pipe it into another, you have one model do its job and do it really well and pass it on to the next one, right? And so, yes, naturally, we want to be able to pipe things. We've seen how we can pipe things and seen what we could use to pipe things. And the next thing we think about is how do we get advanced interactions with this information, right? And so the first thing that comes to my mind is really, we have to answer the question of how do we, or can we rather, give these models access to the internet, access to external data to interact and manipulate things like databases or APIs, right? 
And the first thing that we think about, uh, you might have seen this, is tool calling or function calling. It's got a lot of names. And essentially, we have a predefined list of tools, functions, services that we put into our or around our prompt that we then let the model leverage and utilize. And so when we do make this prompt, we then leverage these tools. This is an example of a query, like, a, like I promised, using LMQL that you could see at the top, it defines a Wikipedia tool. And then after that, we have a prompt uh, that tells it exactly which part of that prompt to extract to then pass to the tool. And then from that tool, we get the response. What does that response look like? We have our question, we have our action that we use that tool to do, and we have our answer, pulling data from Wikipedia. Now, tool calling is also really interesting. The next thing in advanced retrieval that I want to introduce you to is multimodal retrieval, or rather, advanced interaction. Um, with multimodal retrieval, we're using and leveraging embedding models with different modalities. And so essentially, we look and can retrieve things based off similarity outside of normal modalities that we're used to. So think text, think video, think image. We get all of these, essentially, put them in encoders, generate our vector embeddings, and then put them in a vector space. And with this, we're able to retrieve and plug that into this, already, this pipeline that we already have. And so this is what that code looks like using a tool like Weaviate, where you see our near image function here. Uh, and we passed in the base64 representation of an image if we want to search for a movie poster, for example, um, and then get that based off of similarity which I find extremely interesting. But I've talked, a lot about a lot of, I've talked about a lot of things. How do we actually pipe those things together? So how do we go from predicting that output and then having that predictive output that gives us the confidence to then pass that on to other external tools, be it through tool calling or be it through multimodal retrieval? Let's look at what an actual example might look like, right? And so I have this very rudimentary example of an interaction that most people would have. I could get my phone and take a picture of a microprocessor and then ask, what the hell am I looking at, right? What would that step look like? The assumption for a lot of us today is, I want one model that fixes this problem. Or my challenge today is, think about how multiple models, smaller models perhaps, could do this job and how you can pipe that data using things like predictive outputs, and tool calling or multimodal retrieval to get the solution for your uh, problem. So with that, I want to say, let's think a little bit outside the box, and let's stop giving our users tasteless, smellless truffle pastas. Thank you. <laughs>